here it is. Uh, if there's drop frame or quality <laughs> uh, decrepitation or uh, degradation, just let me know. But this should be fine. And yeah, tonight, as you can see, up uh, at some point, on somewhere on top left corner of the stream, I got a ton of gold, and we just got a gold sink. Uh, a rotation on an existing gold sink in the game. So we're going to sink some gold into it. Um, the goal is to get a playset of everything. I'm going to stop opening packs once I got a playset of everything. Or we've got... Uh, I think I'm going to stop once we have one of the uh, legendary equipment. And I'm just going to buy the next, the next one out because... Uh, with the uh, drop rate on these legendary equipment, uh, they're not worth that much coal, right? So uh, we're, we're still going to open packs until we uh, get all the all the cards that we want to get. And once we do, we're going to um, we're going to move along and try to do some theory crafting. So I want to have four bloodlines, four gazes, the mercenary, and the sleeve. I don't care much about the alternate art cards, although they are pretty darn cool. And the equipment, so that, that's what we're after right now. And that's what we're going to test, and then we're going to play some vampires in the campaign, because there's a new event in the game, and we need to harvest some uh, more PvE cards tonight, so we've got a lot of things to do. And it starts with buying... Kiss Mets Vampire Pack. Now, uh, the first batch I'm going to buy is... Um, I I'm going to go with 10, I'm going to go with low number. Usually I just go with 60, but I, I often get a lot of extras. And I, I, I do want to keep gold. I, I want to use it as giveaways for the warden as much as possible. So, we're going to be a bit more uh, restrained this time around. So we're just going to buy 10 and start opening them and we're going to do it one by one because that's important and maybe we can track some things here let me uh and we're going to track that uh first 10 packs here it is okay so um where are the packs? They are, you know. Why did he show uh, other packs? Of course, it's other packs, and they are here. So, go wardens! Go wardens! No. Let's try one. First one, what do we get? We're going to document everything. We get an entra. And. Drawing case. All right. That's cool. We want that. We've got one. Second one is blood soaked. Blood soaked slippers. All right. Things that we didn't had before, so that's good. I'm optimistic we'll see a legendary equipment in the first 10 packs and it's going to be cool. Uh, number 3 is the exact same thing, so... Already getting extras. That's fine. It's going to happen a lot. And... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Um, if someone wants slippers, uh, I, I, I appears to be getting a, a, a decent amount of them. So, I'm going to be available for trades. <laughs> hey! Thanks for the follow. It should, why, why is it not appearing on the screen? Kole Crow, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the team. Welcome, adventure. And if you feel like it, you can join our merry band of uh, PV enthusiasts and all time uh, wardens of Entrat, helpers of all things X. On our uh, Discord, you can just type exclamation mark Discord and you'll have our Discord or exclamation, exclamation mark website and you get the link of our website. Uh, and we get another enthralling gaze. That's cool. 
Let's see, five. And trolling gaze. All right. So we're at two gays and three slippers in five packs. That's not a lot of diversity, but uh, we're going to get there. Yeah, well, if you're a Venom, you need a bunch of uh, slippers, I guess. Hey, we gotta sleep. Well, that's cool. This one's out of the way as well. Royal... Bloodline... Sleeve. Okay. That's good. Getting there. Opening another one. Hallelujah! 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 We rock! Oh yeah! Oh hell yeah! Blood salt salt tiara and boom! Here we go! We got one! <laughs> it took seven! <laughs> Alright! Would be nice if we get both legendary equipment in the Tom Ted packs, right? Why not? Why the hell not? Let's try. Let's try to do another legendary equipment and not the same this time. Because if I have extra legendary equipment, I will trade for sure. And trolling gaze, okay. We're going to uh for the uh very fast full police set of M trolling gaze. Or already uh We've got three slippers, three enthralling gaze, uh, and a, and a legendary equipment, so that's pretty darn good. Like, even if the all nine packs would have been the 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 same equipment, and we've got one legendary equipment, I would I've been perfectly happy with that. Not even close. Blood <laughs> soak slippers again is that a running guy i don't know for 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 those who already opened uh kismet packs where you getting all, all all of the uh all of the all of them boots all right and uh tent one is lady violet black blah, 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 blah. lady violet black black board a bit too hard. A bit too hard. I'm going to just leave it there. You complete it correctly in your mind. And uh, yeah. That's one cool card though. A and it is it is really a PvE playable card. And the equipment is quite good. So uh, I really don't mind getting a playset of these vampires. And we may even be playing them later tonight. Um... So, we only... Yeah, we didn't really get a lot of diversity, so I'm going to go with another 10 packs right there. And, um... It would be nice if I don't have to break the million gold, but uh, we'll see. We will see, so... We're at pack uh, 11 now. And... Starting strong with pack 11 and the royal bloodline. We need four. We've got one. We're missing one and trolling gaze and uh, a legendary equipment and the non-legendary stuff. So we're missing the vampire, vampiric cave, and and vampiric cape and the guys. And this is our fourth and trolling gaze. We're now good. For the twelfth card, that's okay. And next, we are going to get a legendary equipment. No, another and trolling gaze because we need. Uh, apparently, we need a lot of and trolling gaze. Like that, that's the, that's what you're doing. You're a vampire. You're gazing, things, gaze into. The soul of the humans you encounter and you just drain them and, and why not another one? Why not another one? Do, do, do. Just three in a row, right? And uh, yeah. Okay, another one. Oh. Something new. 
walking on yard. That art is super cool as well. I'm I don't know that this is going to be very well. I would say this if you're on a budget, this card is super strong for PvE. Uh, but it's likely not going to make competitive decks that much. And let's see the next one. This would be 16. Another bloodline. Yes. Alright. Royal bloodline. So we're at two bloodlines. We've got all the gazes. Uh, we've got all the equipment for bloodline. We're missing all equipments for enthralling gaze. Okay. And 17 is. Kismet love me? Uh, what, what what more can I say? Kismet loves me. And I love Kismet. This is a this is a two-way two-way relationship that I have with Kismet. She's very good to me. And I am very good to her. And yep, yep. Alright, so guys, guys, I'm going to be real. If there's someone in the chat that wants to trade a Tyra for guys, doing it right now. Doing it right now. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get some equipment for uh, a gaze. I don't know. I've got a million gaze and I don't have any equipment for it. That's a bit weird. Uh, I am going to sell a Tyra, but if if I find someone that uh, that wants to trade the guys for it, then I I'm going to uh, I I'm definitely going to trade it. Uh, I don't know. They likely are not worth the same, though. Well, it depends. I believe with the um, the Oni packs, the two legendary equipment were of the same rarity. I don't know if these two legendary equipment are of the same rarity. It just it might just be an outlier. But um, let's do pack nineteen. See what we get. Royal bloodline. Going strong with that means uh, we're missing one royal bloodline and both equipment for gaze. Did I get a mercenary? I don't think I got a mercenary. Yeah, I didn't get a mercenary still, so we we do have to find a mercenary. And try and gaze again. Okay, so... Huh. So I want to go with 10 more packs now. Uh hmm. That's a good question. We need to value our goals as well, so uh Well Bloodline. We're missing one. And it sells for what's the current trade rate for gold, isn't it? Uh 250, something like that? 200 uh no it must be lower than that. Open a trade chat for a second there. See what's the ongoing uh, trade rate for gold, but let's say it's uh, 220. Um, that would, yeah, they sell more than one pack, but at the same time, you get, you know, one pack right away. Are there any for gold? Oh, there's for gold as well. There were a pack. Well, less than, less than a pack. Screw this. All right, I'm not buying. Maybe I should just do that like right away. Not even buy the packs, right? If you're going to be able to buy the cards directly for gold, lower than the pack price, there's no, there's absolutely no reason to buy the packs. So, I'm missing one, right? I got three. So we're going to get that. And uh, what are we missing? So, equipment. Empire Cape. Did I misspell it? Vampiric Cape. Okay, so Vampiric. Vampiric Cape. Vampiric Cape. Yeah, goddamn Vampiric Cape. 
Uh, there's four gold, and it's less than the wor it's, it's a less than the price of a pack. So, sure. I guess next time I'm just not going to buy any Kismet packs to be like you get the only thing you, you cannot get is the sleeves, right? So if you can get everything else at below the price of a pack in gold, then you just don't buy the Kismet packs, right? The Kismet Reserve pack. You just buy the items for gold, and that's it. I guess that's the uh, that's the lesson learned uh, for this stream. Okay. Well, I didn't waste too much gold before realizing that, so that's good. Uh, I'm, let's see what we get with the mercenary. Vlastislav. Uh, Vlastislav. Vlas, it's not there. Hmm. So if there's no mercenary, I still need to buy packs to get it. Uh, that ah okay. Well, no one's selling the mercenary. That's a bit of a problem. So we still need to buy some packs just for the mercenary, and we're likely going to sell our extras for gold. So maybe I should shouldn't have yeah. So there's another lesson. I should have checked if I had if I was able to buy everything that I needed with gold. And then buy it, because if I'm still missing something and I want them tonight, I kind of have to open more packs. So, what I'm going to ask you guys in the chat is, do you have an extra mercenary to sell for gold? And if so, I'm willing to pay you uh, a pack, a Kismet Reserves pack worth of gold for it. There's a, oh, I had a filter, right? Yeah, that's... Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Mercenary. That's... Yeah, here they are. So... The lowest is 280. What's 280 in gold? Is it... Is it... Uh, 280... That's 61,000 gold. But we get it without having to spend likely... Yeah, I mean, it's it's three packs, right? It's three Kismet Reserve packs. So what, what are the chances that we get the Mercenary in three Kismet Reserve pack? Likely very low. Assuming that the gold trade rate right now is around 220. I think 220 is... Uh... I think 220 for the gold is okay. And then, uh, we are missing the guys. Okay, whoop. We are missing the guys. Yeah, it's worth a ton, so... Are we going to open a bunch of packs, so... Let's just see how much gold this, is that one worth. Uh, it's not going to be pretty, is it? it? Going to do a quick. So guys, it's one, four, nine, eight. Ah, that's a ton. Okay, so let's assume to twenty, and then we do this times this. That's three. 100,000 gold, like that's 300,000 and 330,000 gold. That's 20 Kismas Reserves pack. But at the same time, we already have everything, so that's the only thing that we need, and we're really not guaranteed to get it, right? Even with that much gold, so. Hmm. I guess the best thing would be to uh, sell the guys the extra uh, Tyra. What what's the going rate? Oh, it's maybe it's uh, less common then, or no one else is cornering the market right now. Yeah, I guess eight hundred for the Tyra. 
I found someone who wants to buy. Let's see. Yeah, maybe you're right. And trotting gaze that uh, I've had some hype to it. So. I guess if I if I sell Tyra for about 800 or something along these lines, this one cost only uh, 600, 700, and buying this one for 700, I, I doesn't I don't feel too bad. Like that saves me a a, a, a crap ton of gold, right? So uh, I think I think that's okay. I think that's okay. And then we can go straight up to... Uh, oh, oh, that means we need to buy the, the mercenary as well. I still think buying a mercenary is not too bad though. Yeah, let's do this. Alright. My my gut tell me that uh, this, this is just more efficient. That's, that's still the lowest price. Yeah, okay. Alright, I got a lot less platinum than I had before. But, I saved a ton of gold and I can post a tiara on the ocean house. So... And so ultimately I just opened 20 packs and I got two legendaries, which, which is an outlier. You're not supposed to get two legendaries in the same in 20 packs. So I was extremely lucky on this one. Uh, yeah, it works. So we've got everything that we need now. Which means we're going to go into the campaign. And now that we have a bunch of character slots and it, it is very early in the stream. I think we're just going to create a new character. So now, what do I need? Uh, I, I'd like to have a full roster of humans. Um, so, human ranger. I got a human warrior. I don't have a human cleric. I think we're going to do a human. Or, or maybe I could just do a shinair. And get a sneak blade of the milky eye, so that that's always nice. I got a ranger. I likely want a ranger in every race, though. I have my human ranger. Guess human cleric is good, right? What's the? Just look at uh, human cleric. What do you get? Uh, plus one sorting maximum hand and, dun uh, and dungeon boss encounter, that's pretty great. More gold is great. Your blessings have a random of losing undead. Ah, okay. Mercenary, additional mercenary. And at the start, if you are on a dungeon boss encounter, you start with Alwyn play. What's Alwyn? Sounds like something that would be very good. So that's the human cleric and technically I need a human I could be doing human mage. Um what else do I need? I think I've got my set of venoms. I got venom ranger cleric I got a mage. I don't have a venom warrior. I do need a venom warrior at the very least. Forecast to two with inspire. Oh, that, that's really great. That's super strong. I guess I really love that. Hey. Here's six. Okay, so... Could be human cleric. Yes. I don't want to spend too much... Too much time on this one. Yeah, let's do a human cleric. 
Let's do human. Ah, this is one angry cleric. Let's go human female and we do cleric. And we do. Ah, crap. We need to find a name, do we? Yeah, that's. Uh, okay, so. Human cleric. She's a ginger. That has big boobs and a mean mace. Uh, just call her maze. Maze, maze, maze. I don't know. If for the ones that watch um, the uh, Lucifer show, how do they write the character name Maze? I guess I can want I can find that very quickly. IMDB uh, full cast. Mazikeen. Oh, it's Mazikeen, yeah. You call her a maze, but it's Mazikeen. Yes, uh, we can we can do that, right? Mazikeen. She's uh, she's looking mean. <laughs> that human cleric blessing just makes me sad. Yeah. <laughs> big big boob ginger sounds like a good name. <laughs> All right, let's go with Mazikeen, because the uh, race class combo is super good. Like, getting a free troop on boss encounters, assuming that at some point we're going to get really, really hard stuff. Uh, that could be the end, like, the whole deck could be centered on that one, so... Uh, it should be, usually... If we don't... Uh, if we're not too slow... We should be done with the first um, the first dungeon in about 20 25 minutes and then it's going to be uh, we're going to play our new machinery and we're going to level the character with it but we're going to theory crafting with it oh nice we've got look look at this let's take a moment a lot happened recently and we've got a new um, I don't know how do they call these uh, these great epic uh, decks that they sell on the on the on that store and the new one is the the one with the librarian and it has an insanely good sleeve like one of the best animated art in the game and look at that sleeve there's no logo there's no anything and god is is it good collector deck all right this this we can work with so let's get this party started Let us get this party started. Also, this uh, is going to help me gather some information for an upcoming event that we're going to have. Wardens of Entrat are going to uh, do to have a a, um, a time frame on the uh, charity stream that is going to happen next weekend, and we're going to be on the twenty eighth, starting at nine p.m. Uh, Pacific time and it's going to end at 2 a.m. Uh, on the 29th and also Pacific time and we are going to have a ton of fun uh, there's going to be a lot of PvE uh, I'm going to be running arena with a few very cool decks uh, there's going to be PvE cards giveaways and we're going to have a speed running event with members of the uh, Wardens of Entrap so, uh, really looking for that. Uh, what do we do here? Uh, we usually, if we can stall a game, we just want to have some flight troop and then pump them. And we should be good to go. The human starter deck is really just stall a board, play one of your few flight troops and then boost them, boost them up. And if you can get more flight troops in the process, that's great. Having the Inspire trigger to have the flight troop here is going to be perfect. Pungal Monstrosity on turn 3. <laughs> I guess your new uh, the concepts work. I I'm really eager to test this one. I really love the idea. I, I love pushing the uh, the architect, so to speak, to the next level. 
that's another thing that's going to be on the Wardens of Entra website soon is uh, Axel's uh, new uh, tinkering with uh, a known archetype. I'm not going to uh, spoil more, but uh, keep your eyes open. All right, just going to play the biggest, meanest things around. Not even sure why I'm activating the blessings, but oh well. Next turn is going to be a win, and yeah, that's pretty much just Garrett Key. Uh, not that hard of an encounter, and it should be. I mean, this is the first encounter in the game, right? Besides the tutorial. Kraken turn 3 is pretty darn good. I gotta say that. I guess... Um, the only one that would be a problem would be uh, fights that have stages like the... Um, uh, what's his name? The uh, boss in the Brun Crown Bluff uh, dungeon. I is it uh, Scott? No, it's not Scott. This is Great Machine Graveyard. Kraz... What's his name? I can't... Seem to recall it from the top of my head. Yeah, it's not, no king, but there's there's a name, right? He has a name, that guy. Who's pissing me off every single time I, cr I try to create a free-to-play guide. And I get stuck at this exact same place. Because uh, the uh, rewards be in the campaign, they're great. But they don't line up very well with progressing in the campaign, if that makes sense. Uh, so, um, if you're not going to get... PvE cards outside of the campaign, say, uh, through the auction house, or uh, going to the frustrating arena to get some very powerful cards there. Uh, what you end up being is a, what you end up getting is a, a deck. If you're limiting yourself to only adventure zone cards, and you get a starting account, uh, you're just not able to go through uh, Brood Crown. Uh, that's just you, you take. It takes a very above average hand just to be able to do that. And that's a bit of a pain. The rest is okay, but then again, you enter the Kraken dungeon, and yeah, things don't get better. <laughs> so that's another thing. I, why why is it not displaying? I it, it bugging me right now. Um, where is the Twitch alert? This one. Yes. And okay, give me a second. Thank you. Get to play it's X. Follow, follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the team. If you're interested in joining our merry crew of PvE enthusiasts and all-time X players, uh, reference for all things X, we've got a, a very, very active Discord with more than 100 people in there. There's currently, if you look just below my name, there's the number of people active on the Discord at this very moment and uh we're doing everything we're helping everyone with pve with pvp uh there's a ton of discussion happening uh i i'm keeping the reins really tight on being a gentleman or a gentle lady so no crap on the discord and it's just a bunch of welcoming people that wants to help and answer any question you may have for x so join us if you want kazraga this is the one so here's our website and here is our discord all right so we've got our plan going we've got a flight troop and uh, going strong with the attack in the air and that should be the win next turn about the gentle attack helicopter what what is that what what are you referring to? Gentle attack helicopter. I have That sounds super weird. Ooh, we've got another one of these noble citizenries. And that's great. Fighting a good fight. And there's uh two more fights to go and then we can start uh, playing some vampires. I we are, we are going to be playing blood and there's a very 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 strong core 
of blood cards uh, that works in any deck and they tend to win games on their own so uh i guess we're going to start with that and then we're going to add vampires in the mix i mix i need to review the new cards though we want to kind of play the new cards uh we can also build a some kind of a um some kind of a uh, slittering marauder deck that would play a royal bloodline as early as we want so um there's that we could do that like not necessarily play a vampire deck but play uh, a royal bloodline deck so that that that's also an option uh we want to test the power of uh entrotting days because at three cost and if you want it to be good you kind of need to run equipment that's a ton to ask for three cost card and it needs to be darn good uh, and i'm i'm aborting tonight i will be um going into terror crafting for the uh new kismet reserve pack with a uh, competitive mindset so i want to find something that's going to be very powerful Powerful enough to be a shell that we may want to run in Frustrating Arena. Powerful enough in a shell that we may deem uh, worthy of uh, at least farming some amount of gold. Even though it might not be the best. I, I would be very surprised that we have a uh, competitive gold farming list with these cards. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe we find something. There's a lot of mercenaries available and there's a ton of things that we can do. And, and Trolling Gaze is a card in itself, while we're wrapping these fights up, that uh, it's just going to get better as the content gets harder. Uh, stealing a card from the opponent hand is uh, going... It, it has a varying uh, value that is uh, proportionate to the quality of cards that they are playing. So, as the content in the game gets harder, and the AI gets these AI-only insanely powerful cards, this is where a card like uh, Entrolling Gaze is going to uh, get better and better. So this is the kind of card that's just going to get better as the game progresses in its release of PvE content. Now I know a lot of sour players right now will uh, will will you know cringe a bit at the mention of uh, PvE <laughs> released content, but it's going to happen. We're going to get new PvE content. Just be patient. I understand that we had to be patient, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I understand that uh, not everyone is still very engaged with the current PvE content. But I'm the kind of mindset that I have makes me makes it so that uh, the only thing that I'm trying to do here is uh, go through the content that we have as fast as possible because I'm not even sure that I'll be able to cover everything that I want to cover before we get another set, uh, before we get a dedicated PvE release, and. Um, that that that's my uh, that's the way I approach PVE right now. So uh, that's why I created the Wardens of Intrad as well. We'll see if uh, that pans out, but I know it's not a common perspective on the current PVE in X. But I do enjoy it, and there's an infinite depth to deck building and the amount of characters and mercenaries you can play. So just love it. This is great, we don't seem to be dropping any frames at all. And CPU is at 50%, which is perfectly fine. All, all good, all good. So, yep, yep, we've got a flight troop. And we've got a shield trainer. So we're going to do that. And um, turn three, we've got our flight troop. We don't have anything to boost our troops just yet, but uh, we're we're in the right track, and maybe we get some kind of blessings at some point. So, and then we can start. So, what what do we start with for uh, vampires? Well, we're going to play the new mercenary until it's upgraded for sure. I want to test the duskwing thing. Ooh, I think I'm going to wait one more turn to play the Pegasus. And then we're going to be able to have it bigger. And... Oh, 
Okay, no, I don't want... Yeah, I think I want to fly troop. And then I can go with trainer. And then we could do some other stuff. 3-3 three, three Pegasus is good. We've got a nice board. We're in control. Things are going well. And another shield trainer. It's not that bad either. Not going to go with the Bastion just yet. I want it to fly. Ah, we've got some nice Inspire Chain going. Next one is the Bastion. Maybe we even want... Uh, some of these to die. No, that's not a good plan. Well, let's just take three. We've got plenty of health. Health is not a problem. Here. Oh, that's a big mean flight troop. Here we go. Attack for three. Next turn, attack for eight. Next turn, we win. Just like that. Well, strategy is uh, really simple with the human deck. There's not a lot of finesse with it, but it works. Play that for posterity and to send a message to Idi that we're not going to be vanquished today. Light troop attack! Okay. Now we're going to play a mercenary. Vlatislav. Vlatis... No. Vlastis... Vlastislav. Vlatislav? Vlastislav. And here we go. So what? It took about... Well, I, I'm, I'm babbling. In a, at the same time, right? But it took about 20, 30 minutes. It's not too bad. We've got one talent point that we're not going to be using that much, but... Um... Get that one out of the way. And now... I'm going to play with a mercenary. Vlas, Vlas, my, my good friend Vlas, 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 here, starts with 10 health and what a look on his face, well, what, what is he doing right now, is it with a bunch of clowns, he seemed to be a clown himself, himself, and he's rending a baby that he's eating, or is that a small clown, well, I'm not sure. There seem to be some kind of ghosts involved in, in this. That's creepy as hell. Okay. That that's yeah, that that's creepy. Alright, so what do we know? Fully unlocked blood Blood Grid. This is the most powerful shard to be play, to be played in PvE. Um overall. So barring the one card combo decks, that really doesn't count. Uh, if you're going to play a non-combo or non-Zokoi deck, uh, usually the if you have one fully unlocked shard, you want it to be blood. Just, the, 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 just the card quality in PvE for blood right now is just through the roof. Like the other shards are not even close, not by a mile, not by a mile. There's some nice stuff, and we've got access to two of each artifacts. So that that's that's great. And uh, when an opposing champion is dealt damage, gain health. So let's keep in mind that this does not mean combat damage. So we could be doing something that does non-combat damage, and we would be gaining some health. I, I get it, you're doing a lot of turn 3 kills right now, and that's super cool, I cannot wait for this deck to be uh, spoiled. But let's get to our uh, guy here, and troll the mortals, 4 charges. You can see and play the top card of each opposing champion's deck this turn. Uh, I guess if it's a resource you play it, if it's a card that you don't have a shard affinity for, you just can't play it, right? That's not a... Super exciting power, but we start with seven cards in end, and 
five vampires. Okay. Okay. And then once it's unlocked, we're going to do some transformation. All right. Uh, if, yeah, it appears that he is reverting after he is upgraded to Duskwing form, which is uh, weird. Well, it's not that weird, right? So you're in Duskwing form for a turn, for your opponent's turn, then they cannot attack you, more than likely. And then at the start of your next turn, you revert. No, you transform into Vladislav, so... Oh wait, that's zero cast? I thought this was a one shot. Huh. You do this every turn? Is that how it works? Oh man, I cannot wait to unlock this one. Okay. Let's do a deck. So I'm going to start with the usual suspects and then uh, let's build from there. So and Gorger. And then we want Sneak Blade. And then we want Maggot. And I'm going to run a ton of equipments. We want this, we want this, we want... Might not be playing. And now we've got our new cards, right? We want to play Gaze. And we've got seven Gazes. Target opposing champion, reveal each non true non resource card in there and choose a reveal card and play it for free. And this makes it so that each non resource card instead. So we can get troop. So it feels like if we're playing this card, we kind of need to play the trinket. We kind of need to play the trinket. Uh, creates a vampire. Creates a vampire, I, I really don't care about. But if we're playing Gaze, then uh, it feels like we are playing this. And if we are playing this, that means we're not going to play Maggot as much. Alright, so Bloodline. Bloodline. Got four. Summon a vampire king and a vampire queen. One vampire deals damage to a champion if this is in your hand and gets minus three. So we clearly want to have four. And we don't even need to play any of the... Yeah, I don't think we need any equipment on Bloodline, really. Just, just uh, go with that. So, but if we're going to play Bloodline, it means we're going to play some vampires, right? Do we want uh, the full curve or we're, we're definitely going to play Prince, Princess. I don't even know if we're playing Vampire King. But these two are nice. Uh, right now we've got... Do we play Vampire King? I wish there was a one cost uh, vampire. Uh, if we're playing queen, it doesn't that that kind of defeats the purpose, right? Because we're going to play the queen, we're going to attack with three vampire. This is going to lower the cost of bloodline. Then we're just going to play a million vampire, and and we were already winning by mile by a mile. But uh, bloodline doesn't create a lady violet though. And this is a head piece. Well, this is encrypt, sacrifice three troops and put this into play. So maybe what we want to do with our turn three. I want to play too many turn trees. Well, I guess this is where Gaze um, come into play. Because if Gaze does create a vampire with a chest, it's just more vampires that we can play. And this, this becomes draw a vampire. Uh, but it's a random vampire, so it's draw vampire, but it's worse than draw vampire, and there's some pretty shady vampires in there, so 
got two, three, four, five that are good. Six, seven, eight. So five out of eight are good. The rest are not that great. I'm still not convinced. Like losing the chest equipment on Sneak Blade for this doesn't feel right. And if we're going to play Prince uh, and we're in Mono Blood, I believe we're going to be playing some uh, Bride. But that's a ton of tree drops. Like, I really don't want that many tree drops. I'd rather have even earlier drops, but I'm wanting to test uh, Bloodline for sure. Are there any other ways we. Uh, Play Bloodline. Any ramp in blood. We could play two. We've got the weapon equip, so we could definitely play two. Um, we could play two uh, Triolet. We could play Succumb to Madness. And then we send a bunch of, bunch of things in the crypt. If they are troops, then we could activate Culmination of Blood and go down that road and just play a bunch of Vampires instead of uh, lower costed troops. That could be a thing. Not even sure. Because we need more than 20 troops to play Culmination of Blood. And then we have Succumb to Madness to play. I don't think that, that map works out. It could work out if uh, we're not playing Gaze, maybe. So, succumb. Illumination and blood. And yeah, that's a million card right there. Four, eight, twelve. Uh, that's 16. We would need to play. At least 20. Maybe with 20 troops, that's okay, actually. I, we, we might be okay to do... We might be okay with that. Just create troops. We may be okay. And we still... I guess we can go up to 36 cards and 22 shards. We can even go with... Uh, we, we only need 3. Um... Three resources for, for the most part for this deck, so maybe we even go at 20 shards. So what do we add? Do we go just go with Vampire King? Do we go with Vampire King here? What do you guys think? We could go Vampire King, we could go Oni Assassin. Uh, with the blade. That could be uh, introducing a board wipe. Uh, we've got some evasion there. Uh, well, if we're playing Succumb to Madness, I guess... We could go with Violet. And we only have one though. And go with the Ed Equipment. So when we Succumb to Madness, she's going to be in the Crypt. And uh, we're going to be able to... Sacrifice troops to get her on board, but we don't really have Dead Cries, so that's not that great. Maybe we'll just go with the... Um, uh, the... Maybe we'll just go with the Disciples of Yazukan. And then we're going to play Flight Troops. And our... If, if all else fails... We're going to be relying on Bloodline to uh, pull us out of the grindy matchups of sort. This could be a Vampire King though. So we're not getting free troops after uh, Succumb to Madness, but... We're getting... Um, uh, yeah, we're not playing Mav the Storm as well. Can't be great to be playing Mav the Storm with these troops. So maybe we just don't go Succumb to Madness, Combination of Blood, Route, and we go with Vampires and ways to clear the path. I kind of like that because we're not playing that archetype, so we want Mass Storm for sure. 
Because that's the coolest card ever. And... Um, I guess if we're going to be clearing a pad for vampires... Uh, Bright is going to be great. Right? We've got our brides, we've got our vampires, and we've got our gaze to disrupt. And then we can play some uh, acorn since we're not playing shenanigans. That's going to be drawing some more cards. And we've got uh, card advantage sources all over the place. I'm not too scared about not having drawing cards besides the Moss Storm. Oh, Princess Equip reduces King's cost to one. Well, that would be a strong argument to play with Vampire Kings instead of uh, instead of Bride. I love that. So we've got a million. Uh, We've got lethal troops on the on the ground with uh, troop generation for chump blockings for days. Uh, this is doing uh, damage on the side as well. It's going to gain us some health. And then... Uh, yeah, I guess turn 3 Vampire Princess into uh, Vampire King that costs 1 plus something else is great. And our ad slot is kind of open right now, so I guess we're going to do something like that. Right now, we're not playing the trinket on this one. That leaves uh, feet and weapon. Mastorm does have feet. This doesn't have a weapon, it has... Yeah, we're not playing any... Uh, I guess... So, where do we go from there? We've got some vampires for sure. We want more vampire? I feel like playing 12 vampire is good, it's okay. For the purpose of the deck, so we've got Mass Storm to clear the path. We've got uh, Entrolling Gaze to play troops uh, in our opponents and for free at quick. So I guess the next step would be uh, to have another quick action so that we could hold on to Gaze. And if that doesn't work, we play something. I think that the curve we have right now with the Acorn, I think we, we can play like two or three more cards. Like maybe we we'll just go with Hero Falls, I guess. And we go with 20. This hero fall solves every problems. Oh, uh, we could go with... Um, what was the equipment on this one? That's a trinket. Ah, crap. It's still pretty darn good in PvE. We could go with... Um, contract... This is your end, deals 2 damage to you. And we start with 10, so yeah, we really don't want to play that card. And we already have a bunch of 3 drops. I don't want to be playing something that costs too much. And... I really want to use the weapon equip though. That's that's the that's bugging me. Weapon equips are usually fairly strong equips to be used. We have to find something nice for weapon and boots. Uh, let's do rarity, I guess. There's Fentio as an alternate win condition. It could be great, but the weapon equipment is not that. Uh, Stalker is so scary to be played when you start with 10 health. But. The. Wait a minute. When you are dealt damage, if there's 10 or less. If you have 10 or less health, 
add a spike counter to this. So that that's kind of that's kind of a neat interaction with this vampire guy. Go from only assassins we discussed. Uh, oh, we could go with uh, Monsoon. I kind of want something that's going to accelerate us. Like we've got flight troops, we've got mass storms or something that goes wide. You know what? Maybe we just go with maggots. They're not quick, but maybe they're good enough. Like maggots with uh, lethals are so good. Uh, that's really hard to beat. Hmm. Maggots make it so that we can be. Uh, we can even be ag more aggressive. Yes. Wait, what's the speed on... Uh, what is it, army? Oh, let's see. That's a trinket. Damn. There's a zapper. How do we get more aggressive with these four last cards? We've got removal, we've got denial, we've got lethal to block the board on the ground. Uh, we've got a bunch of flyers. What else do we need? We need to be able to deal with big stuff. Marstorm is kind of like that. Um, no. What do you have? Equipment, trinket, loves, I guess. Continue our quest for a weapon or a. Turn it when kind of well, we could play two trial it because really there's no that card is just stupid strong, and I wouldn't mind playing turn one. Uh, ah, we don't, yeah, they're all double threshold though, and we don't have ways to draw cards. We could just be playing. Oh, Stingy Jack, Stingy Jack has a weapon, and that's the good stuff. That's four cost though. Not that much into four cost things. Isn't there a thing in blood that triggers when we gain health? Uh, I mean, this guy is strong. Is very 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 strong. Or anything in blood that deals direct damage to the opponent on a periodic basis. I get. I guess we've got our Shinair uh, here, so. Maybe I don't have Chua boots, really? Huh. Okay. Well, we could play the bloodline thing. Anything that accelerates our vampire? I don't think so. Direct removal. I think we're good on the removal part. Uh, two trial it. Or a bunch of maggots. You know what? With Moss Storm, I'm just going to go with a bunch of maggots. And uh, that that really bugs me. Oh, we cannot play four acorns. Wait, 
Where are the ices? This. This. 22. Works. Going to set the sleeves. And we don't have a board, but uh, what what's the equipment name? Shoe the boots. I should have that. Why do not why don't I have that? Dude. Ah, that's high. Yeah, that's a bit too high. Okay, maybe not now. All right, so we're just going to equip the boots for the. Uh, Just going to equip the boots for this guy here, and then we should be good to go. Not that we're lacking <laughs> that equipment, right? And... Uh, we're going to put this one in default. Oh, last thing, we need to... Do we want to go... 21... Uh, uh, do you want that like, to change? Yes. And then we go clatter uh, clank. And then we go. You know what? You created Redling, right? Start a game, someone Redling. That's super good. Okay, so we want that. We do want that. Does that help me? Really? Yeah, it helps with Mass Storm, so we're going to go with that. I don't think we want charge gain as much, so what else do we want? Gain some health. I wonder if You have less health than each of us in champion and two burning counter. I wonder if the burning counters are going to give us some health back. That's going to be test. Uh, sure. Wait, where's the freaking deck? Oh, really? You're going to do that to me. Game. Game. Hate you right now. Been a while since that uh, didn't happen, but it's okay. We're going to quickly get back on track. That's <sighs> when you save, but you don't give it the name, and then you switch. Without you do a modification, you switch without saving. It, it kind of and you say yes, save. It saves a an empty shell. So it's not that I didn't knew about the bug. It's just I forgot about it for a second there, and it's uh, really bad. Uh, we add these cards. We, we add mega, and then we add two acorn, and that's it. I'm missing a card. Like what? Yeah, the card was Moss Storm. Game. Don't screw with me again. Again. Save the deck template. We're going to say, um, just. Bloodline version 1. Yes, Matt. Vampire. Ah. Version 1. Okay. Of course, I save it without any equipment. So we add this uh, 
here. We had this here. We had this here. We had this here. We had this. And we're missing a trinket, which would be this one. Alright. We don't have any. Yeah, this is quick. So. Okay, so that works with Gaze. I love, I love, I love these two together. Save the deck. I'm guessing we don't have a sleeve. Oh, that's the the full sleeve. The deck. Save again. All right. Can we do this now? Let's do this. So first thing we want to test is: Do are we getting back Elt? with um because of back set here's party passive we're going to test that right now all right cool sleeve cool sleeve all right going first we got a Moss Storm, we're going to spawn Dreadling, which is going to lower the cost of Moss Storm, Moss Storm on the first turn, which is super duper cool. Uh, and we've got some turn one plays and vampires, so th this is this is a keep. Yay, Dreadling. Um, since we have Moss Storm, I think I'm going with Meal Sneak Blade first. I'm kind of loving this Dreadling here with Moss Storm. Oh, we're getting out! We're getting out. So these three burning counters means that we're going to gain uh, two burning counters. Two burnings counter at the start of the game means that we're going to gain three elt every game, and we're starting with a dreadling, which will usually hit. So that means four more elt every game. Every game. The sneak blade of the milky eye are uh, unblockable. That means more elt. Works too. All right, no bloodline in sight, but we're going to gain one more elt because of the block here and the trigger. Now we can attack with these two and Moss Storm. Gain some elt, do some damage. Oh, well, for someone who's stuck on one resource right now, it's not too bad. Hey, why do we have an engorger like that? That's not supposed to be. Why is it not? Uh, is there any passive that create cards? You're going to kill too, right? And now you're dead. Okay, one resource works. I want to make sure the engorgers that I have in the deck are not... Yeah, there was one. I don't know why. Because I added five and then removed one. So save as... Ah, it doesn't save... Mm. I'm just going to save version two. Ah, one of the quirks of the... Uh... Deck builder in PvE, deck uh, builder in PvE I really don't like. Like the uh, saving and vanishing of decks and the fact that if you're doing modification, you come back, you load your deck and then you find out that you can't see the name and then if you want to save and you're not even sure if you're saving into, uh, often you're just saving into a uh, just a uh, brand new auto save. And it kind of works weirdly. Hey, look at that. Two more health. And three more with this. And uh, this dies when? At the end of your turn. This doesn't have quick, so we can't take advantage of that. Just going to go with the Engurger. Next turn, we Vampire Prince. 
And Vampire Prince with uh, Life Drain means that if it hits, we're going to get 4 health out of it. But for now, we're just going to do Maggot since uh, we've got one troop that died this turn. And we're getting two Maggots. That's a lot of Maggots. We're not trying our uh, champion power that much right now, but uh, all good. Gaining a bunch of health. Also, going with early troops uh, that go wide means that you can gain some some incidental health, and that's really good when you start with ten, right? And. Okay, attacking with everything. Oh no, you're not dead. Uh, you are. Oh yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. Guess that's a shell that works, right? I really want to upgrade the Merc, so maybe... Maybe we just take another character and then we run... What's the shortest dungeon to run to upgrade the Merc? I guess we go... With something that has one path. Yeah, the Vampire Kings just cost too much. I want to see a Royal Bloodline in the starting end. But yeah, starting with Moth Storm and a Dreadling is super good. Super good. Like that's one damage, and then we've got three going, so our opponents start with four less health, and we start with four more health. That's that's kinda strong. And going into a vampire prince on turn two. Works nice. Next turn we're back with everything. Moss Storm would be minus one cost. And we can kill that. We can even play the princess. Back with everything. Moss Storm is just disgustingly good. Like really, really good. You just play the one one drop package and Moss Storm is just a beast of a card. Just a beast of- Oh, look at that! One cost Vampire Kings. Let's do that. And... Can't play more this turn. And you... Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, we've got- Oh, I forgot I, I should not be playing my shards. Alright. Yeah, usurper. I think I think that's what we're going to do. Hey. So yeah, I'm just going to skip and go with uh, something as. Uh, I guess this one is not max level. Go with this one. Power overwhelming. And let's go here. We're going to have to switch things around. And we're going to unlock the mercenary and do some tests. I think that's going to be the... Uh, the usurper was this one. No, that's the... Uh, the one up there. Why don't I... <laughs> I don't even have the... <laughs> oh. Alright. You know what? I think Fort Romor is going to be great. Because there's three nodes in the start of the path. And then we can just reset the dungeon until we get uh, nodes, uh, mercenary nodes on this one. I think that's going to be a good plan. Let's just switch things around a bit. And remove this, remove this, remove this. 
We're going to go with Vlast Vlastislav. Vlas, Vlas, where are you, my friend Vlas? Here. And I kind of love the mercenary setup that we had. So we're going to go with Zorak and Baxat. Ah, oh, user priority inside, okay. Uh, Baxat, of course. Where are you? You're in B. Here we go. You. I have to still have a deck, that's great. Okay. Alright, sir. Let's travel here and try to be... Try to be a bit sneaky with the upgrade on Mercenary. Oh no, what's happening? Oh, no mercenary node. Do we just reset until we see mercenary nodes? That's something we can do. Like, check and see a, a mercenary node in the first tree. If that works like that. If it works like that, it's super quick to level any mercenary. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, what, what I'm thinking is that can we have one there? I'm going to try to prove the theory here. Always on the three bus nodes. Not too bad, right? Because that's four fights away, but... Alright, let's do this. Yeah, and Mars, Mars Storms and One Drops are extremely great. Commander Autorn against Vampires. Yep. I guess against... Um, do I want to play a One Drop? I think I'm just going to fetch a non-resource. Against uh, AI that will start with uh, anything that can block and kill a uh, Dreadling. After the attack, we can just play a Maggot on the first turn and get two. Well, that's super cool as well. I love that. Oh, and Trying Gaze. The first time. Empire. And... Hey, Max! Long time no seem Going quite well. How are you doing, sir? Still playing um, Rocket League or commenting uh, casting on Rocket League. I played the shard before attacking with the vampire, I know. That was kinda bad. Okay, so. Oh. When we can play it for free, it doesn't become quick, right? So, might as well do it right now so we can play the troop that we steal. Uh, all tree tree, this one is the closest one. Oh, it's directly into play? Wait, what? Play, oh, you play it for free, so you can use it as a combat trick to block. Okay. That's cool. Your own broadcasting studio, that's super neat. Nice. 
Are you going to TwitchCon? Oh, that's spicy. Let's see. Oh, what do you have? Uh, I, I guess that's a way to see if we are able to use Vampire Prince or not. Uh, going to do this. And if you don't block. And we can Vampire King. And yeah. Should be a win. So Gaze being able to act as a combat trick now makes me... Yeah, it's a lot better than I, I first thought it would be. I thought you would draw the card, have it in your hand, and then can play it for free. That makes sense. But, uh, yeah, that's even better. Nice. Nice. Oh, we've got a bloodline! Like, we would have been able to play. But, uh, yeah, that's a win. Alright. So, Gaze being quick, and... Yeah, I can see, yeah, I can, I can totally see Gaze with the equipment, uh... With the Trinket equipment being a top tier, uh... PV card. With, when we get harder con uh, content for sure. Yo, first! What kind of deck is that? Oh no, I forgot to. Yeah, let's just. Do this and then set this one up and then s switch. So the vampires are kind of working, but I I am I am still working uh, same place. Uh, I'm still team lead for a backup service delivery team. And uh, what else? Uh, that's great. We even get a Maw Storm on the first turn with our Dreadling. That's super nice. Uh, we've got Entrolling Gaze. Do we play? I guess we we kind of want to play Entrolling Gaze in a deck where the tree drops left. You don't. You're not playing. It's like top of the curve kind of thing. But we can build like um, one drop, a one drop curve in blood. We can certainly do that, and then use Entrolling Gaze. As our curve topper, kind of neat. But yeah, having like four cost vampires, like the vampire kings, are not that like, great. You know what? I'm just going to keep Moss Storm in my hand and uh, destroy anything that I play, or not. Right. You want to be annoying? You are. Going to get this and just going to play a mega. Like a one-one lethal for one is really not that bad. Like it trades with everything. So don't if you're playing maggots, don't be uh, shy to play them for uh, their cost like that. So and and the four draw four four turn. Princess into king. That's kind of neat. I don't have any resources, so I don't want to take the first card of their deck. But next turn, we're going to steal. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just grabbing shards. For the most part. We could control gaze and take a non-action non-troop. Yeah, we just want to attack first before doing it, don't we? And use it as a combat trick. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, 
Moss Storm. And we can still gaze. Ah, I should have used, yeah, gaze as a combat trick, but okay. I'm liking gaze. Let's see. Uh, sure, why not? Still have uh, an amount. Yeah, one cost Vampire King is kinda great. Not going to lie. Uh, Princess... I guess the, the Vampire Curve works a bit better if you're playing Vampire Princess with the equipment. Because obviously uh, you're getting a discount on the Vampire Kings. And then all of a sudden that opens you to be playing on turn 4 a Vampire King plus uh, Gaze. Or just play Princess and King on turn 4 after a Gaze. Well, it kinda works out. But when you get Vampire King alone, it's not that... Oh, that's going to be great. On the draw. On the draw, this Dreadling and uh, Maggots are kind of nice if he blocks. No blocks. Alright. We don't have Moss Storm. I guess we're going to Sneak Blade. If we're playing blood, yeah, yeah, mono blood with this uh, merc is not. Well, this merc's power here is not that great. Like, like we said, we can you, we can use it to grab a shard once in a while. And that's kind of cool. But for the most part, it's not that big of a deal. Sneak Blade getting infinite blockers though, it's kinda nice. Ooh, now we attack first. And we've got Entrelling Gaze as a combat trick, but there's only two cards in this hand. So I think we vampire this and then fertile engorger. And now we're at 20. Because we're stealing, we're double dipping on every life gain that does damage that we have. Oh, uh, that's kind of great. Yeah, we're just. Sure. Yeah, I. Uh, well, we're going to unlock that. Uh, we attack with everything. I played a shard, did I? Didn't I? Yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad to play the shard. What's your last card? I want to know. Okay. Uh, sure. What do you have? An uncharted. I guess we we can use it to know what's going on. Got a pretty nice board so far. Sure, you want to trade? Raid. And now we play King and we play that and we get a ton of ult. And we attack with everything and we win. Okay, so I I'm kinda loving the uh the vampire trio. I I love the vampire trio a lot more than I uh expected to love it. Oh our Merc node is there. Yeah, we're going to get there for sure. Okay, this is a great end. Let true. Now block the dreadling. <laughs> I don't think he's going to block the dreadling. But 
Ooh, that's nice. Um, yeah, we're going to mass storm the crab out of, the, out of this guy. And starting with a siege tower is great. It is super great. I don't even think I'm going to be worrying too much about flight troop. Uh, yeah, we kind of can attack with our vampire. And less troop means uh, more efficient moss storms. So I think this is the direction we want to go. And then hopefully we can kill the next flight troops they play. Not training here. Uh, crap. Okay. Stop playing troops. There's too much for Mass Storm to be efficient. So what do we do here? Do we uh, entroning gaze? We attack with everything. This becomes minus one. That means we can do it twice. Ah, great though. Hmm. Let's try our ends at uh, Entroning Gaze shenanigans. Yeah. Okay. That didn't work great. Oh, he draws it. I thought he would be putting it into play. That was... That was a misplay. Okay, you know what? I don't like this guy at all. And you can look here and here. Oh, I did a terrible mistake. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. <clears throat> let's let's try to uh, get better at this, shall we? Uh, this and playing like a clown right now. Yes. Knowing uh, now that he would sacrifice this troop, maybe I would have uh, done this one a long time ago. Yeah, let's take nine. Ah, uh, not another one, really? Oh, two moss storms and four troops and... That's spicy. But we can destroy three. That means at least one of the flyers. We're losing our uh, vampire princess, but that's a decent clean up right there. Next turn we attack with four again and we clean up the board. Ah, maybe not. Oh, that's nice. So, this. And we can't do another one. But we're going to have a ton of things that dies. We're getting enough health that it's okay. Next turn, we're just going to take complete control over this game. And we even got another Sneed Blade. Hello, Moss Storms! Minus 5, minus 1. 
And now you cannot play any troop for the remainder of the game. And we're back on track with Elt as well. So Mass Storm doing what Mass Storm does. Stealing games. All day, every day. Should not be attacking with these. Because it just makes... I really wish these triggers would just attack and go directly to the appropriate amount. That would be so great. It's even longer because we're doing like multiple triggers of damage, multiple sources of damage and this guy here is getting... Uh... But it's all because of my mistake, right? So. Combat. No, 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 no. Last storm extravaganza. Like I think having one is bad, having two is bad enough, and then you have all your triggers there. Ugh. Ugh. That's the downside. Like if if there was a. a uh, a better way to render these and like these stacking numbers this deck would be so so fast like i i truly believe the cheat the cheating bride deck would be one of the fastest uh if if this thing here wouldn't be would would be happening instantly like one trigger would be one of the fastest deck period but uh yeah that, that adds a ton of time it. Challenge completed. Two fights away. Let's not try to screw this one up enough so that we uh, had a million number of minutes to the duration of the fight, shall we? And that's great. Absolutely nothing to complain here. Opening up with a uh, Engorger because we've got Maggots into the, our hand. And if it sacrifices itself next turn, we're going to get four Maggots. And now we're in the territory where... Um, after that, we're in the territory where Mass Storm becomes extremely good. Hey! 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 hey. Six one drops with lethal on turn two. Yes, please. Thank you. That means we're uh, completely dominating this game right now. It's already won. Not even three troops are going to save you, sir. You would need a lot more than that. You would need a lot more than that. Oh no, you blocked. Lethal. And that's it. Try again. Oh, no troop, you say. That's great, because we're going to get this... Uh... Yes. We're going to get this Mastorm for free. So during your turn, if you play anything, you're screwed. Well, if you play, you need to play more than one thing. If you don't want to be screwed. Oh, uh, that counts for more than one thing, I guess. Still pretty dead. Let's see what you have. Uh, do not want to manage to target champion or troop for each troop you control? <laughs> Hello? All right, I love it. <laughs> that works. That works too. That works too, so... Yeah, this one is completed and we're going to get a... Go first. 
Uh, that's not a great starting end at all. And we've got a free milligan, so we're going to use it into a moss storm with a sneak blade opening is as good as it gets. Recast moss storm, and then we're going to be into the realms of turn two moss moss storm if we need to. But we're not going to do that. Just going to play an ice. Make sure that we don't draw a shard next turn. And my storm is sticking at 2 right now. Next turn we attack with 2 troops. Going to be free. Going to be playing whatever we get. Next. Um, sure. 1 cost Vampire King incoming. Hey, being able to remove all blockers while playing vampires is kind of neat, right? And then you you're in you're disrupting their end very very well. Oh wow! Okay. Dead. Oh no, no no no, that wasn't oh that wasn't the right one. Appears that we're not playing Vampire King this turn. Alright. Was a bit of an inconvenience, but uh, just going to play the guy first. And we we'll attack with a decent amount of troops right there. Minus one. Works. And we've got one in line for his turn. And we take up Repel. That's cool. No, not the Vampire King. Our King is now cost two. If we get another vampire kiss, we win there. No, we don't. So we're playing this guy, we're playing uh, this one, and we're doing this. Not that it matters, but running vampire kiss to their face and gaining four is a ton. Not 4 damage? You know what would work with this champion? When we deal damage to a champion, we gain health. Wait, is that... Is that an infinite loop with... No, it can be. Isn't it? Thanks. Wait, that... Surely it doesn't work like Yeah, there has to be a loophole, right? Let's see. So when you gain health, each opposing champion lose one health. And this is when you deal damage, right? Is dealt damage. So I'm pretty sure this is not a. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is not a, a a loop, a loophole. But I feel like we should be playing Paladin though, with a bunch of one drops. That would make that would generate a ton of damage. Maybe we play uh, him over the Vampire Kings. Yeah, it's lose health. If it would be deal deal damage when you gain uh, when when you gain health, that would be an infinite loop. Is there anything in the game that triggers damage when uh, you gain health? Because if there is, it's an infinite loop, infinite damage loop with this guy. I'm 
trying to think on on the top of my head. Do we have something like that with an equipment somewhere? A trigger that does damage when you gain health. Nagan Paladin? That's the one I'm playing right now in the deck, but it's when uh, it, it, make, it makes them lose health. It doesn't do damage. Uh, we're going to go with Engorger. And Maggot next turn if he, uh, if the, it sacrifices itself. And then we have four attackers for uh, Mastorn. No sacrifice, so it means this. And uh, I think I'm just going to go with Nagata anyway. Just to use resources efficiently, and the upcoming turns we're going to enter out in gaze. Hey, Mastorm! My old friend. To attack. Mm. Yeah, we do. If it trades, that's great for us. There's less uh, things to kill with Mastorm. It's always a plus. Alright, so you attack. And when you attack, we check your hand. Take the biggest, meanest thing. And then we 2 for 1 yourself, sir. That's a nice 2 for 1. You can't always guarantee that they're going to have troops in their hand. But... Uh, I'm liking this. Liking this quite well. And then we do damage. And... No, that's before they draw a card. We would... Yeah, if we had a... A stop. Do multiples of these. And now we've got an entrotting gaze. What do you have? Only shards. Alright. Oh, yeah, he'd be so dead. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, um. Hmm. So this guy here with a bunch of one drops is super strong. Like it doubles the damage of one drops that hit our opponent. Opponent is dead anyway, but that would be a bunch of triggers there. Really liking the Paladin in this deck. Like Paladin with a bunch of uh, one drops and then um, I, I'm still not so... Well, I, we haven't drawn bloodlines that much, but... Like, do we really need bloodlines? <laughs> what kind of deck needs bloodline? I think the deck that are going to play bloodlines are the deck that are going to cheat uh, actions from the crypt. Instead of, uh, like, playing vampires. Because playing vampires for bloodline is not that great. Uh, we've got a mass storm, right? Um, yeah, this guy. This guy has to be the priority when you have mass storm in your end. So yeah, I don't think yeah, bloodline. You're not playing that in a vampire deck. You're going to cheat. You're going to use it as a very high costed action that you play for free on turn three, four. And then you're going to have a bunch of vampires, and if you happen to have one in your hand, then you can lower its cost to zero. And that's great, right? But for the most part, and a the vampire they cost so much. Granted, we're stuck on one right now.
This guy and this guy with Master is just so good. That it's a game winner. Like it's a three three card combo that wins more any game that you have them. Maybe these should just be shards. Oh. Like we're still winning right now. With our one drops at trade. One less thing to kill. Hey, look at that. We can play our vampires. And here we go. Okay. Okay. So that's going to be our second um, unlock for the mercenary and then we're going to get a turn and uh, things are going to be great. Yeah, Moss Storm with a one drop and enough shards to play uh, Gaze on the turn three. Feels okay. Like on turn two, we can uh, remove any troop. I'm really loving Moss Storm with the back shot uh, champion power. That's great. Uh, maybe maybe we can find another champion power, uh, another mercenary passive that provides a um, an attacking troop early in the game. Even if, the, if, if, even if it's a zero one, right? If it can attack, we, it, we don't care if it, uh, if it does damage or not. I should not have done that. Going to do, go with the vampire, I can always case later. He has a ton of cards. He's stuck on resources, so. Green at the end of the world. Now I'm not playing Gaze. I'm not playing uh, the Shard. I'm playing Master. So we're going to get multiple maggots. Hey, look at that. Double dipping on the, on the health gain here. Multiple maggots. And now we can, um, before the. What do you do? I kind of should have done Gaze before I play the troop, but... Do we get to kill you? That, same as last time? Oh, wow. Uh, Sniper of Gawain 3. Plus 3, plus 3. This turn. I guess we go with a Sniper. Get this troop. Or, yeah, no. We kill him. We use the uh, mass storm. Hey, wild bloodline! Just too late to the party. Eventually, we're going to play one, but for the most part, right now, that's not what we. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloodline. Really not sold on bloodline right now. On the bright side, though. I'm uh, liking the uh, gaze more than I expected. At quick. Well, it's not that it's too slow. It's that if you don't have it in your opening end, you will never be able to play it because it doesn't reduce its cost while in the deck. If it would reduce the cost while in the deck, it would be like uh, the ascension cards. And that would be a whole other... You know, an all, a whole other story, but uh, as of now, it just doesn't work the way it, it, it has to, to, to be a good card, really. Mm. 
Let's go with that. That. Attack. Too bad. Turn two and Gorger, maybe another one drop. We're still playing 12 one drops. We could be playing even more than that, but. Go one drop and then. I think um, if we're not going to be playing Bloodline, might want to switch to a um, culmination of blood, succumb to madness, kind of build. Let's keep that for later. If he plays something we can kill, then maybe we uh, do that on our turn and get more maggots. Ooh, combat. Hey, surprise. Ooh, I like these. Uh, these are good. Hey. Kinda two for one. Not having a uh, quick on the maggots though is a pain. Oh, I should have. Mm. You know what? We can attack with everything, and something will die. These guys will die, and we can two maggots, so it's not too bad. We're not drawing the Paladin of Nagan that much. But that could certainly be part of the build. Build a flyer. Get more one drops. Yeah, I don't have in mind combination and succumb to madness. Yeah. Well, I wanted to try bloodline, but kind of doesn't fit. I have a way to kill you right now. Not really. Yes, we kill this guy. And we attack with everything. And wouldn't Tonya just be superior if you're Yeah no I Tonya or uh actually I believe Condavian would be the superior fully unlocked um mercenary for blood. Because uh Moss Storm enables you to destroy every single troop on the board. And with Condavian upgraded, every time you do that, you get a Vampire Princess, which is insane. <laughs> and and since you're playing a campaign, you can have Mercenary Passive that are going to provide you with uh, acceleration on the Mass Storms. So, yeah, that's likely. I, my money is on Condavian for um, for a Succumb to Madness combination of Blood uh, type. Uh, deck. It's two two per turn, right? But when you kill something, you gain health. Does it work when you your own troop dies? Well, if you're playing the Mass Storm with the million one drops, you shouldn't be stalling that much. And if it works when your troop dies as well, should be perfectly fine. Uh, up on a troop. But then again, you're creating a million uh, lethal troops. So, you're playing a million lethal troops, one drops, and then you have mass storm, so... 
I mean, you're going to kill stuff. A bunch of stuff. Alright, do we go... Open it as a flight troop that does... Uh, that, that seem to be mean and we have mass storm so we're going to go with that. Ah, I know. Well, I guess you can play vampires if you need to. Oh, he attacks with everything. Great for us. Oh, wait, it only works with wall, right? That's, that's still what I want to do. Could have uh, killed this one, though. Come on, Vampire Prince. Oh, yeah. 16 health, and then we play this. And then we're at 18, 20. And then we play this. All right, it works. Sure, take two. And it allows us to gain <laughs> four health per, per these guys. Uh, we're going to play the Nagan now. Because that's going to be a ton of damage. When you gain health. Okay, so we're going to gain one, two, three... Or five. If this dies, six instances of health gain. So we're doing six more damage. Is that how, how we're doing this? So he's dead. Yay! That's how it works. Ah yeah, finis, finis, uh, finit, finis pin, pit. Yeah, it has to be top. Yeah, it has to be Condavian or finis. What does it do? Upgraded. Because I think Condavian is faster because you're uh, going to kill things very early in the game and you're going to steal them and transform them into vampires. And that's a lot of pressure very early in the game. Oh, well, chances that you're going to stall the game are extremely low. Nice, we've got two Sneak Blades and a Mass Storm in our hand, so the game is won already. Oh, we've got a bloodline, but we don't have any vampire, and that's useless now. Oh well. Can't win them all. Yeah, bloodline is just... Well, at least in this shell, it's useless. Like, we're not doing anything with it right now. It's just... Uh, really... I'm trying to think of a world where it works, but... Just playing vampires and hoping to play bloodline, it's not it's really not the way to go. So if we attack with these guys, we're going to get three oh we're going to get a lot of one drops with lethal. Oh I could have used this and then we would have uh, had so many would have had 10. I, I'm loving the Paladin of Nagan though with this build. I think it works really, really well with this. Um, with this setup. Like you play it on turn 3 with a couple of 1 drop. And the game ends super fast. Should have cleared the blockers maybe. Blue. 
does it do damage to champion? Oh, okay. Vampire it is. All right. Oh yeah, you mark them and then you get them back. That's the death sentence champion. Oh, uh, not champion mercenary. Come on, more storms, really? Just complete. Level 14! And a new unlock, so just one more run and we're good. Ding dong! <laughs> I bet. I bet it works. So, we wanted to change Bloodline, right? Because Bloodline and the buyers not great. Not great, so you don't work. These two, I kind of want to give them a try out. Okay, so we're recuperating a couple of equipments. 4, 8, 12. We're at 16 troops. So, what other troops do we want to play? Because if we're going to. Suck him to Manis. And then we kill Munition of Blood. And when we're removing this, we're going to play uh, Yaz, the Yazuken guys. That's four, one, one, two, three, four, five. That's 20 troops. With. Uh, I think I want to go with 20 shards. That too low? It might be too low. I like the last few ones to be troops as well. That would help with this guy. And maybe have synergies with Crypt, like more Crypt synergies. We would be playing Bride. On that slot, but anything that we added that has uh, no, like this has an equipment that we don't have. But um, right is is definitely strong here. Maybe I just want to play more shards. I think since we have this guy, we want to have um you know what? Just do this. Go with these and a bunch of one drops and succumb to madness. And what class is this guy? This is a vampire, right? I remove back shot. I just lose everything again. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, I don't even have my save. Wow. Really? I just don't have my save? Friggin. PvE deck builder being great since uh, since we don't care. Okay, we're going to do this again. We're going to do this again. And we're going to do this again. Uh, it, it's not lately. It has always been like that. There's nothing new in there. So what am I missing here? 
We've got this, we've got this, we've got this, we've got these. What am I missing? I had before. This is removed, this is removed. Good play the headpiece on combination of blood, but that's not. Oh, we've got the uh, acolyte. Uh, yeah, as you can. These guys. Okay, so save as. Version 3. Oh, yeah. Five vampires. I get these are vampires. These are kind of great. And then... Um, one violet. And then we go with the... Uh, uh, yes, you can. And we still play three. And that enables us the... Um, At least we can play the head piece for Lady Violet. That I apparently don't have. So save as version 3. And you are a vampire. Why did I want to see what what was this class? Is there are cards that care about Oh that that's this. Choose a troop in your hand that shares a class with you. That troops get minus one. Oh that's nice. Minus one on vampires, but that doesn't work on vampire brands, it's only on princes and kings. But that could have been a, a thing for sure. Just put the back set again because I really like him right now. Alright. Let's do this one last time and then we can have fun with the uh, brilliant text on the mercenary. All right, give me an upgrade. No upgrade, so it's always on the... Uh, yeah. So we'll see if this version is better. Uh, well, I'm fairly sure it's better, but... You have to save before everything. Ah, uh, wow, this works. Does damage on L gain, but not Paladin of the Necropolis. Yeah, that that's pretty much it. If we have anything that does damage to the opposing champion, when you gain L, we got an infinite loop, and it's just an auto win. Oh, and the uh, Dreadling also helps with Culmination of Blood. Nice. Hey, Javier. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the team. Welcome, adventurer. We are the Warnings of Entrat, and we've got a nice uh, Discord that is open to public. If you want to discuss about anything about X, PvE, amongst uh, other things. Uh, you join in, open the public, there's more than 100 uh, users in there and most of the time more than 50 uh, online users. And we also have a cool website that you can check. Here it is, so... Oh, and this guy helps with the generating uh, shards, right? So. 
That's kind of neat in a low shard count deck to have the Vampire Prince. I kind of like him. It's aggressive enough and it provides enough value that I, I, I like him. And we win. And he provides reach. So I I would not be surprised if it's uh, the correct play to play the Vampire Prince in these decks. It in the uh, Cheating Bride, maybe even replacing the Brides. Gil is rocking. Yeah. Which one? Vampire Kiss, Violet. Vampire Kiss, Violet Scaris. Well, it's not something on the board ongoing, right? It's just a one time thing, so. Yeah, this works. We're going to culminate our blood. And oh, even Ma <laughs> we have Mastorm now, so. Easy. Turn 3 Succumb is going to get. Uh, what do we get? What's Succumb to Madness? Paladin of Nagan to wrap up the game quicker. Here's two more. And after that run, we should be able to unlock the power of uh, Vladislav. And here... We wanted a pen. Yeah, combination of blood and uh, gaze are working against each other, right? So we're, if we're going to do that on turn 3, then the gazes are not that great. So I guess gazes are not for now. At least not this archetype. And it's likely it's it is very, very likely the strongest archetype, so I'm going to say uh, gaze is not there yet, but very high potential for later. Very, very high potential for later. Because the uh the second the madness combination of blood with a bunch of one drops and mass storm is just extremely good. I, there's not a lot of stuff that I would say are, you know, less powerful than that in PvE right now. What do we have? We have constants that are not trigger. We've got... Is there a way to... <laughs> is there a way to... Uh, ready one of the uh, the uh, a bunny pound so you do a bunny pound you gain some health and then you do some damage and then you ready a bunny pound and then you do some damage again like when you gain health ready it ready a card if we have that then then we would have an infinite combo somewhere but that could be a thing i'm going to keep that and try it on the play feels Feels okay on, on the second turn we attack. Yeah, we're not playing vampires with disciples of uh, Yezukan. Because they're the one we're all, nearly always going to be playing on turn two. Just a mass storm. Maybe I should have played the uh, sneak blade, but we're going to go with that for now. Next turn we Paladin on the Necropolis. Do we? Not quite sure. I want to. I kind of want Paladin because it's, it's uh, increasing all damage done by one. Is there a freaky fungus blight bark vampire deck? There is for sure. I. I Oh no! 
Our cool troop. Yeah, curve dubbing a tree is pretty darn good as well. Die. And uh, this this mercenary though, starting at uh, like 10 is really not a problem when you have a bunch of one drops that can attack really early in the game. Or as if it, if it's a flight troops. Like, it works really well with uh, vampires overall. It's just that like neither of the uh, neither of the cards are particularly competitive. And Bloodline is really for combo decks that are running slithering my orders than anything else. So that that is where we stand right now. Maybe we play resource. No? Okay. But uh, are you doing Vampire Deck? Well, that's what we've been doing so far for uh, a, a, a while now. But uh, we just came to the conclusion that... Uh, well, at least if we're speaking about the competitiveness of... And the feasibility of having a Vampire Deck that's, uh, that's synergistic and has enough power behind it to be wrapping up games at a decent pace. And the answer is no, you're not playing Bloodline because it's too clunky. And if you draw it late, you, late, you can't play it. And even if you have it in your starting end, it doesn't guarantee that you have early vampires. So there's a bunch of stuff that can go wrong with Bloodline. And both its equipment are just making the card doing more, more of the same. So they add nothing to the card at all. They just make it go wider. But you're already going super wide with a vampire king and a queen. So, really, Bloodline is not the kind of card you want to be playing. Hey, wait, whoa. And, and that's one thing. Uh, as for Gaze, Gaze is very, very good. Being quick, being able to uh, steal, say, a troop from their end and put it on the board when they attack means that you can 2 for 1 them with that. So that's pretty cool. And you can do a bunch of stuff with actions. It's a card that's going to get better as uh, the the release uh, X Entertainment release more content, and the AR gets big, better and stronger cards to play with. So that card stealing their card is going to get better as their card get better. So it might not be you know the best thing overall right now, but it will be very good once we get real endgame with insanely powerful cards. That being said, though. Uh, right now, the best blood shells are the ones running um, the uh, culmination of blood with succumb to madness and a bunch of one drops. And if you're going to just destroy or completely remove your opponent's hand, you're, you're not playing uh, gaze, right? Because there's no cards to steal at that point, so it's a bit pointless. You've got two cards that works against each other in, in your deck, and that's really not where you want to be. Um, so for that reason, my conclusion right now is that Gaze and uh, Bloodline are not competitive cards. These are not cards you'll be playing if you want to, uh, you know, get a fast slash powerful deck going. If you want to go for the team, they're pretty cool. Uh, they're very strong cards on their own and they do something uh, very unique. So I love that, but they're not... You know, the, the unease uh, that we had in the past, right? They're not as good, so... But they're pretty darn cool. We're still... I was... When I first saw the card, I was thinking that like, maybe we get a one-cost uh, vampire in the next set. And, and then Bloodline becomes a bit better, but the reality is that... Bloodline is, is not great, uh, it doesn't work, it's not because we, we were lacking a one cost vampire that Bloodline doesn't work, that's the thing. The problem with Bloodline is that it doesn't, it's, it doesn't work with, like Ascensions. If it would be run, working like Ascensions, I would be playing the, the card. I, I, I would think that this is a good finisher in the Blood deck, and, and that's powerful enough, but the, the fact of the matter is that that's not what's happening. At all. Like, you draw this slate, it costs 13. If you don't have Vampire on the board, you're not going to have 13 resources. 
And that's a big problem. Okay, so this game is a bit weird, but besides the fact that we're winning the game solely on one Sneak Blade and one Mastorn, things are going well, it's just super slow. Hey, we're going to play you. I should have played the Shinner and Tech, and then it would have died. So two mana storm. All right. Yeah, well, that that's what I was saying. There's there's multiple ways to uh, cheat uh, actions in a creep with slot uh, with uh, slittery marauder. So if you're going to cheat uh, the the cheat play the. Um, the bloodline then yeah it becomes a really interesting card because uh now you're go likely going to play succumb to madness and then you play a slithering marauder and then you play uh bloodline from the crypt and then you get a bunch of vampire on that turn likely turn three so that's pretty cool uh and that works so uh in say in the campaign if you have access to uh a lot of blood and a good sapphire grid like we do with this that could be where we go with bloodline that could be that we're playing a marauder deck with succumb to madness and we're just going to play bloodline on turn uh, three the problem i have with that is that it's never going to be as powerful as playing um, culmination of blood on turn three With the rest of the shell being as aggressive as it is, I think, and and since you're just playing like three marauders, there's uh, there's still a chance that you don't have any marauder. Like, let's just say I'm not a fan. That could certainly work. Uh, there's a, a couple other cards that plays cards for free from the crypt. Uh, another option would be. Instead of doing Marauder, we could be doing the... Um, and actually, that's a good one. We, what we could be doing is a, um, a Venom Cleric deck, as we're playing right now. That is going to uh, play uh, a shell with um, a Blessing of the Immortal. So then you play Succumb to Madness. And then you get your Blessing of the Immortal, and at the same time you fill your Crypt with uh, uh, Bloodline. And then you just Blessing of the Immortal on the Bloodline and get a bunch of Vampires into play on turn 3. That could certainly be a thing. Actually, I need to review the... Um, I really need to review that deck, because we've got so many good tools for this deck. Uh, since uh, I made the shell a while back. And it's going to be super powerful with Succumb to Madness and Trio it, so there's definitely a thing there for the campaign to be done. Oh, I don't have my. St yeah, never mind. Hey, post combat stat boost, sure. Hmm. I really don't like Maggots not having a quick. Uh, uh, that would make such a big difference on these fights with Maggots with quick. No, just one. Again, we're on one. <laughs> We're winning games, we shouldn't be winning on one shard. With these one drops, the quality of one drops in blood is insane. It's in friggin' insane for PvE. Like, if you're playing blood and you want to play more, you're playing a card that costs more than one, it has to be extremely good or it has to be fitting a requirement somewhere because 
The one drop slapped is insane. Like there's only very few circumstances where that that's not the best course of action. You win arena one round one with blood. What do you play? And if you're telling me that this is consistent, I'm going to call you out on that. Wait, what do you mean round? Okay, no, never mind. I read your sentence completely wrong. I win arena rounds with one blood. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. And if I read this correctly, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, they're just insane. Like, Engorger with equipment is minimum a 2 for 1. And that's worst case scenario. It can be a lot more than that. Magot just generates 2, 3, 4, 5 for 1s all over the place. Sneakblade just gives reach, is unblockable, triggers everything, it provides a blocker every turn. That also does damage. Like, it's just. just between these three cards, it's just so much things going on. And here we've got an enthralling gaze and just, just not doing anything. I'd much rather have Maggot with Quick than enthralling gaze uh, in, in this scenario. Maybe when we get more PvE content, uh, we're going to be in a space, say for specific dungeons, where... Uh, Attacking with one drops not going to be doing anything like anything that has minus minus one minus one attack on all troops render this shell pretty not useless because you can still do a lot of things but it's a lot worse. Oh, we're going to get I will say three. Friends on the next turn. We'll see if that turns out to be true. But yeah, I... destroying their end on the third turn, enabling getting a bunch of free troop with speed on the next turn, and all the while fetching Mastorm from your neck. Just comma. Like, what? What are we even? What? What do we need more? Like, is there anything that we need more than that? Like, even if they're one drops, they're just when you have six or seven, you're still doing a ton of damage. That's just insane. Oh, this game just ended. Go, Paladin. Paladin with this guy is great. Like that's that's a that's a one, that's a nice trick. You're really loving it. Alright, we can upgrade our mercenary now. And we've got a couple minutes to test it. That's great. Oh, we've got this. So we just need a cards now. Here. And then... I'm going to save this. Uh, yeah, we're removing these things. We're going to give this one quick again. And then we have to put troops in this. We've got another Yazukan for sure. And what else do we put in there? Just going to put geese now because I don't want to waste too much time on this. Would you say Count Davian? Uh, what? Like vampire, what, what do you... That, that's the thing. What do you call a vampire deck? So... Why do you mean vampire? 
vampire, I think. Like, that's the thing. What is a vampire? Just a deck playing vampires? Because if you're playing Condavian, you can play zero vampire in the, your deck and then just create create a bunch of vampire. It does that count as a vampire deck? And this one, you you need to play vampires, like five of them, but I don't see us playing more than five. Oh, Royal Bloodline. Uh, I would go with Condavian for Royal Bloodline with the one drop shell. For the fact that with your one drop being lethal, you can likely trade with a troop on turn one or two. That gives you a free vampire early. So if you're playing like a couple of vampire princes and then a bunch of removal, uh, you're just going to get a bunch of vampires. So I would go with Condavian. And I would play like four Vampire Prince and Bloodlines and just destroy everything with Moth Storm and a bunch of one drops so that I get more vampire so that I guarantee that I can get vampires to lower the cost of Bloodline. And I would run no equipment on Bloodline because they're not improving the card. I'd rather use equipment on more powerful interaction that leads me to play Bloodline instead. Like removal. Okay, so we wanted to upgrade the Merc. Let's see. I remove this guy. And we click here. Should be upgradable. Yay! Now we're going to test his power once he's upgraded. Maybe there's some. Really? I just changed the deck. Did it. Ha! <laughs> oh! I love this. I love this so much. So, so much. What did I do after all this? We don't have any vampires now, do we? We need five. Uh, vampire, prince. And then we play one, get one princess, it's better. And then we go with double equipment on Maggot. That's where we want to be. And if we had the boots on uh, Milestorm we would, but for now we don't. There's no need to play. Save this deck. And then save a template, version 4. And I, I, I have no clue. Uh, we're going to test it now. We are going to test Dusk Fun now. So it, it's a way to... Uh, I guess avoid damage for one turn and you can only do it once from what I gathered so we'll see if that's the case it's still pretty darn good like if you can do it right away on the first turn even though it's, you can only do it once per game there's a ton of encounters where if you negate the damage on for one turn you're in a fantastic position so even though it doesn't feel like it is the best mercenary around being able to do this once a game uh, does feel powerful enough that it might be a good mercenary for the future. Yeah, zero cost, you transform... What? Wait, what? It's not a one-shot? We do this as many times as we, as we want? It can be, right? Like being invincible, for the most part? Not even work. And with the maggots with quick and this guy here, you, we can go to end phase. He dies. And wait, wait, what? 
Oh, I need I need this stop here. Ah, uh, we can do this instant speed? Holy shit. We can do this instant speed. That's insane. Uh, all right, let, let's try this next turn. So we can do this during his turn, right? As long as we have priority, we can transform. So say this is combat, like go to combat phase. We transform and he can attack. All right, and and then we get back. Okay, so it's a, it's a one shot. It just doesn't it doesn't display one shot, but it's a one shot. It's still a one shot that negates an attack for a turn for the most part. And that's pretty darn powerful. I I really love the upgraded version of the Merc. Like it's saving you one one turn word of attack, a fog for one turn when you're starting with low health, is very 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 good. And here we're going to get a million maggots. Not a million, but a good amount. And phase. Six maggots. Yeah, maggots with quick and, and lethal is just so good. And then this, but it doesn't really. Oh, a shard. Just attack with everything. We don't care. If you block, you die. You, you lose your troop. Like, well, this shell is so, so good. There's a couple of cards that you can... That's the thing, like, this shell we're playing right now, that is, by the way, a good way to just run over the... Uh, completely run over the uh, frustrating arena, is so good. And there's still, like... Five, six, seven cards that are interchangeable right now. That means that at some point we're going to get best in slot cards for these slots as well. And this build is going to be insane. Like maybe we even get a, another very good one drop in blood with the upcoming set. Alright, so now I have a stop at the end of my turn, right? Okay, so I'm I should be able to do this correctly this go to my end phase it dies i can do this at quick i get so with back shot and the right steps and this at quick i mean you can get two maggots on the first turn if you have uh, if you have them in your starting end you can get two right away oh that's interesting the icon just change for dust wing form that <laughs> that's a bit weird but Oh no, I'm dazed. I cannot play cards. Yay. Like, I'm, I'm playing super easy stuff right now, but I can see how this can become... Like, Dusk Form can become something very important in, in specific fights in a dungeon. Like, you need to survive the first turn. Even uh, something like the Pir Piranha Encounter, where if you can just fog one turn, ah, that's often enough to stabilize. <laughs> hmm. Attack with everything. And Maggots just, with Lethal, to just make Maggots, more Maggots. Oh, we got that. That's great. We got a Geist going. And we got a bunch of troops. Like one drops. That's all you need. When you're playing blood, you need just one drops. I don't even know why I have paladin. Like the paladins are completely interchangeable. We're playing five empire because we need to. Completely interchangeable. And we still have one hell of a strong core that wins most fights. And and we're speaking Difficulty level in arena, and that's the highest difficulty we can we have in the game right now for PvE. So, 
Really cool. So what's the verdict on the Kismet pack then? Um, well, I say this is a very good one. And there's at least one one of the two cards as high potential for competitive, what I would call competitive uh, PVE. And uh, I'd say that um, for the most part, the other one, we don't have a, a good place for it yet, but I don't think it will. I think we always have stronger cards to be playing in that slot. But maybe I, I, I'll be wrong. But for the most part, I don't think Bloodline is going to be played that much. Because if we're speaking about expensive... Um, if we're speaking about expensive actions that we would want to play for free or cheat, there's just more powerful ones like Zakir's... Uh, uh, not Frenzy, but uh, what's the name of the card? Like 8, 9 with the equipment that does 5 to all non-dragon troops and champions and then you transform into a dragon and then you get a free dragon. That's just... just... <laughs> Are you going to choose a couple of vampires or a freaking board wipe direct damage into transforming into Zakir into having a random dragon? Like, it's just... Or just straight up I'm going to draw my whole friggin' deck. Bye. <laughs> At that point, getting vampires, even if you're getting like 10 vampires, not even, we're not even there. Like maybe 10, like how many vampires do you get? You get, you can get all the vampires like prince, princess, king and queen. So that's six vampires. How much damage does it means on the next turn? Like, if you can man let's say that there's a, a shell where you play Araza as your champion, and then you get the um, you get a banner that gives plus one attack and speed, and then on the same turn you put the banner down, you play Bloodline, and that creates six vampires that attack for like 10, 12, 15. We're talking. I think this is the, the scenario where I would see um, the Bloodline card being played. Like here, do you want to play a 2 cost Vampire Prince? Like, turn 2 Vampire Prince is pretty good. But I would just rather play the Engorger, I think. With the Moss Storm. Just have more troops on the board. And we have one resource open for removal. But we're not going to play removal just yet. This turn we're playing removal and we're going to get 3 megas for this one. So, I mean, in a world where the 1 drops are that good, you're not playing. You need to have pretty darn good reason to be playing 2 drops instead of 1 drops. Like the stern tree, I casually have what eight troops on the board. Amongst them, seven are lethal. <laughs> and then I play. Oh, that that's great though. This is not a kill, but it's going to be pretty close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. Yep. I like Paladin of the Necropolis. Oh, Paladin of Negan. Which one was it? Maybe I need to check my Paladins. I think Paladin of the Necropolis. Like, you play the... the uh, I guess the verdict on, on Vlastislav is that you play the uh, Cheating Bride Shell. And then you play the blood shell, the succumb, the culmination blood shell, and then I guess um, you just play five vampire because you have to. That's pretty much it, right? Black 
Plastislav. I guess. Nah, we can do better than that. Hey, you look better than that. We'll turn one and gorger. No, I'm not going to turn one and gorger. I'm not going to engorge. Going to try and turn three. Sick of the madness into a combination of blood. Sick of the madness is going to get Moss Storm since we don't have it. And we have a combination of blood. If we didn't have combination of blood in our hand, we would have gotten the combination of blood instead. But the ideal, ideal scenario is that you have Sick of the madness with either combination of blood or Moss Storm. And then you do and get the other one and then you're done. Uh, Vampire Prince? But Vampire Prince, if if anything, if you're going to play two drops in a, you know, blood shell, competitive blood shell for PvE, uh, Vampire Prince is likely one of the best two drops there is to do that. So here turn 3 destroy your end is not that great but uh, it's it's more about turn 3 get mass storm while also removing your end that is pretty good and then next turn we're going to get uh, we may be getting disciples The damage, next turn we gain 6 or 7. And we're gaining 2 every time we do this. Ah, oh, we've got 1. And I should not have played the uh, shard there, but oh well. You know what? I'm going to go with everything that has been. Get a free mass storm going. And we're going to gain a bunch of health anyway. Look at that! If we'd run another vampire, we should be good. Like maybe maybe vampire prince will be okay if we get a good one drop ag aggressive vampire. I can't see us playing vampire prince because of his power. Because if you can have one drop vampire into vampire prince, and then you you get this on the third turn, and then you play one or two more vampires. And, and you do this and you do 4 additional damage, like that's a ton of damage, like, that's likely a kill on turn 3 or 4. Uh, with evasive flight troops or something, so. Uh, that, that could be serviceable as well. We don't have other vampires, so we're going to do that. And then... Yeast. And this. This. And we attack with everything. And we mass storm. Crap out of this guy. And we do two more. And we do three there. And it's not enough. Sadly. We missed it by one. Why win quickly when you can attack with all your troops? That is a big question. Think about it. One last fight to do. And that's going to be... Well, two fights to do. And it's going to be it for the stream tonight. Uh, we are the one Wardens of Entrap, so if you don't know us, uh, we have a super duper cool Discord that you can join. It's open to public. You don't need to uh, commit to any commitment. Uh, if you're already within a group or a, a, a team or a guild, do not worry. Although we are a guild, uh, it is an open group. So you can be part of any other group that you want. It's still okay. 
and you can still come in and participate in the discussion. And and we're here to help everyone with X. Uh, we specialize in PvP though, uh, in PvE, but we do also have PvP players in there that are very good and that can uh, theory craft and help and deck test. The other thing that we're doing is uh, we're also providing a platform for content producer uh, of X content uh, so that we give them more visibility and, and we give them a space to work with that they don't have to set up themselves and spend a bunch of time uh, doing so. So there's our website there. And if you uh, want to go there, there's a ton of stuff for PV uh, first and second. Um, if you just want to produce content for X and, and you don't have a place where to publish it, you just, just send us a message, go into our Discord or send me a personal message and I'll hook you up. Uh, we've, we've, we're developing new templates uh, constantly. So you can just use the deck breakdown uh, template, for instance, to create one very easily. And and we've got a tons of tons of stuff going. So don't hesitate to join. Don't hesitate to go on the website. And if even if you're not uh, producing content for PV especially, you could be producing content for PvP. And, and you just want a website where you could just uh, you know publish these things. So that they're documented and they're out there and you can just give a quick reference. And that's it. And and if even if you're doing PvP stuff, uh, you know, you've got a Discord with and nearly 120 members. With more or less 50 members online all the time. It's a very nice place to announce your stream there. Just to get more viewers going. And well, that's another thing. That you can do with us and, and use the Wardens of Entrat as much as you can. Really, because uh, that's why we're there. To be used. No, not necessarily to be used, but... <laughs> like, we're providing a platform. We're providing a space where you, where you go and you get more visibility for your stuff. x related, and at the same time we're providing really strong and welcoming community of players that are ready and that like to help everyone I, even if you're a veteran player a very good and accomplished deck builder sometimes you just want to bounce your ideas against someone else and get some feedback and you got a ton of players there that are going to do that at any time of the day or night wherever you may be very active discard that's what we are so do not hesitate to join This is cool, like Paladin of, of the Necropolis. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we need to figure out the Paladins, right? So, sure, gain some health, uh, gain some resources. Mm. Yes, yes. And then we attack with these, and then something dies. Ideally, two things dies this turn. Yeah. This, this, and then up, 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 up. Okay. That works. We're good. Also, new set that was announced today. Dead of Winter, set eight is going to be released in the upcoming weeks, and today was the official launch of the sporty season uh well yeah and uh, what else uh, discord below you got a link in the chat you got a comments we're going to do some great stuff and uh we're just getting started do this So, end phase, maggot times two. I really love that. That's something we cannot do in the uh, frustrating arena. But god, the maggots are better when you have a drilling when you start the game. And playing Engorger on turn two is really not the end of the world. I don't have a mass storm, but it's still attacking for two on turn two. Uh, while playing a bunch of, tri uh, a bunch of things. 
And on turn 3 we're going to Culmination of Blood, get a Moss Storm, just kill everything. Like... And we already have Culmination of Blood, so we're going to get a Moss Storm. And... Remove your hand. Attack. Really don't care that I'm losing a troop there. It does not matter. If I would have been wise, I would have used the uh, catapult. But it's not a quick action and I realize it too late. So That is on me. Uh, this is 6 damage every turn with a paladin. Now a lot more damage every turn with a paladin. So this is a 2 turn claw. And Moss Storm, which is an insanely good card. Well, it's insanely good because we have so high of a quality of one drops that Moss Storm is just... It's just a perfect blend of cards that works together extremely well. And... Here we are, here we are. We won this. And... Uh, Trixie Tricks, yay! I think I'm missing only one, uh, two Trixie Tricks. So we tested, yeah, we tested everything. Do we have anything left that we wanted to test before we conclude this? Our new Kismet's Reserves Rotation impression, Impressions. Mm, not really. It's a good rotation. Um, the cards are really good. Like if you're... The problem is that... Yeah. If you're on a budget, do you, do you want to go for that Kismet rotation? I don't think so. If, if for the, the only one, yes. But this one, I don't think so. Like, the cards themselves are not great, they cost a lot, they're situational, and gaze to be powerful enough to justify its slot, uh, you need to have the legendary trinket, and that costs a million, and there's no way in hell new player, new player or free-to-play player have access to that kind of uh, gold, unless they get extremely lucky, and let's not count on that. So, verdict is... Very good rotation, great cards, very interesting, great alternate arts, mercenary is cool, very very cool. Uh, we may be playing him for his passive uh, at some point. Uh, for his party passive, because um, Bloodstone at the start of the game is pretty cool. Like if you have, let's say 12 Empire with a free mulligan, you can pretty much guarantee that you will have a Bloodstone in your hand at the start of the game. And that's a Blood Shard. So you, you, you would be able, in a world where um, you only need one, one shard or one resource. Uh, that enables you to have that without playing any resource in your deck. In a world where uh, you're only, you have a very low curve, say you're playing a bunch of one drops. That means we could... Actually, with this mercenary passive... Is it worth it to play a bunch of Empire for it? And lower even more our... Because uh, the, the way the Shuffler and Shuffler works is that even if you have a very low amount of shards, you're nearly always going to have one shard. So you can go pretty low. And if you can guarantee with this guy that you'll get one, that means you guarantee to have two shards every starting end. And you can do some pretty shady things with that. So I'm I'm guessing that Vladislav is a very strong mercenary that is very narrow. But if at some point we get the right context for it, it is going to be real good, like broken good. Being able to guarantee a, a blood shard at the start of the game 
it is very 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 good like if we get a, a, a rare or legendary one cost vampire this thing is going to be busted open and it's going to be insane like, even if it even more so if it has good equipment ideally feet or head equipment that would be that would be something all right that concludes the stream for tonight i wish you guys a great night and have fun with the vampire this is really great sporter season is upon us uh keep an eye out for wardens of entrat uh contest for a spoiler of our own and our appearance on the charity stream as well is going to be next weekend so take care guys have a great night